Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to my live quilting chat, Tipsy Tuesday. Hello everybody, near and far. Thank you for being with me here live for a Tipsy Tuesday on a Tuesday this time, actually on Super Tuesday. Woo, but I'm so glad that you're here watching me and not watching the politics on TV. So, welcome, welcome. We have a big show tonight, lots to show you. And um, so if you're here, if you're new here and watching with me live, so make sure you check in and say hi and, and tell me where you're tuning in from. And on today's show, I will be showing you the finale of the Ava Quilt Along, kind of showing you how it all comes together. And of course, giving you all the details on making it into a vertical layout if you want to try that. So then we also have a big launch tonight. I'll be showing you for the first time the three projects in the third trimester of Fast and Furious Club. And of course, remember, I'm here to answer your questions live. So anything you want to ask me, it doesn't have to be about today's topics. I will try and get do my best and get to your questions. Now, please use your thumbs up and hearts, hearts if you are watching live, if you are on a mobile device, that really helps spread, spread our videos. So thank you for that. Um, of course, if you share it, that's even better. So let's see who is watching with us tonight. April's here from California. And we have check-in from Minot, North Dakota, and South Dakota. Marie is here. And let's see, Susan's here. Great to see everybody. We have Missouri. We have Florida. We have a lot of states. And Iowa. It's great. Maybe we have some internationals. We have Wyoming. We have New Hampshire. That's great. Wisconsin. Lodi, Wisconsin. I was just there yesterday. So thanks, everybody. Of course, make sure you stay with me throughout the end of the show because we have a giveaway. And just like last week, we're going to have one winner that is watching live and then we will pull one lucky person that answers our giveaway question at the end and we will pull that name later um, a few days after our show so it's a, you can always win even if you don't catch me live now we had a winner on and yet yeah, on last week's show so i asked you what was your favorite part of the quilting process and it was fun to see your answers so many different answers a lot of people agreed uh, we're on my, kind of my line and then others that really love the handwork. So it was fun to see, see everything. And that's what I love about quilting. There's so many different aspects and, and we all like different things, so many different fabrics and everybody's tastes are different. So that's, that's what makes it really fun. And we still can come together and make the same, same fun, fun patterns and still enjoy different parts of it. All right, so our winner for last week is Michelle Shadima. So congratulations, Michelle. You will get a gift card from us that you can use on the online store, geequildesigns.com. Um, so like I said, I am back from Wisconsin. I took a quick trip to uh, Madison area of Wisconsin. I taught at a local, at the quilt shop there in Middleton called Blue Bar Quilt. A great shop if you're ever in the area to go check it out. Lots of modern fabrics and, and cool things. And then I did a lecture for the Lodi Quilt Guild, which is just um, a little bit north of Middleton. And so I was there actually for the second time. I was there three years ago as well at the same guild. So it was really fun to see familiar faces and of course meet some new friends. And so I took some photos of, um, from, of quilts that were made for my pattern had hung a lot of quilts at the store so here is drippers this was was hanging in the uh, classroom where I was teaching really great version and then there was a couple of teen spirits this one I believe was like a doctor who theme to it or something like that like a um, the fabrics were all from that and then they had a Nordic visions quilt this one is in my quilts of Iceland book uh, really cool it was made made kind of with uh, wovens or chambray's um, and then we have, this is the, the other Teen Spirit, really fun and happy colors. Uh, there's a Kira and a Steamy Windows quilt. And we had a Stroll in Paris. This was a really, really cool version. 
Somebody took it a totally different route with the colors, but I love it. I love to see different versions. And then we have the Lopa Pesa quilt on the bed. So it kind of worked really nicely, that whole setup there. Uh, beautiful display. And then we had a Hecla, a kind of a burnt orange Hecla. This one is also in the Quilts of Iceland book. Really pretty. And then we got um, one of my students brought her stroll in Paris in. Beautiful, beautiful work. It was quilted and everything and ready and bound and ready to be used. So then at the guild meeting, we saw two more Heklas. I loved seeing these two together from these two friends because you can, I wonder if the color versions match their personalities, but really fun to see the two versions. And uh, for me, it's always the best part to see all my patterns in different colors and different fabrics, me being the fabricaholic that I am. And so these, these two Heklas that were started in a class three years ago when I was teaching there. So it was really fun to be able to see the final products up close and personal. So thank you, uh, Lodi Quilt Guild and Blue Bar Quilts. Gail, thanks for having me. And um, I loved every minute of it. And uh, so still good to be home, always good to be home. So it's been a busy day catching up, of course. And uh, we are gonna dive right into our quilt along. Everybody, you only had a week to get your blocks done. I know uh, some of you are still working on it, but don't worry, it's all gonna be good. So today I'm gonna show you the last part, which is really how it all comes together. So from our last parts, we worked on through step seven. So in step seven, we've just finished off the B blocks and make the, making the B blocks. So now you should have all your blocks ready just to lay it all out. So as far as if you're just doing a horizontal layout, just like the pattern, you have all your fabric obvi obviously cut out, your background, so you should have some uh, rectangles. Let me show you what I have here. So you should have some small rectangles and then some larger rectangles. And then, let me actually go like this. And then you should have some strips that are going to be all your sashing strips and your border strips. So what I always do when I have a lot of sashing strips and border strips, these are all going to be the same size. So we're using the same size for the borders and the sashings. I like to just take all my strips and sew them together into one long strip. That's going to give you the best use of your fabric. And it's just easy to, to piece them all. And then you can cut them into the right sizes. So I like to, it depends, it's a personal preference, or sometimes I make a decision based on what kind of fabrics I'm using, whether I just piece the strips with a straight seam, or if I do a diagonal seam, like this. So if you're using pretty much solids or really tone on tone that you really can't see the pattern, sometimes it's fine just to do a straight stitch. It's obviously gonna save you a little bit of fabric doing it that way, especially if you have wide borders. But if you have some kind of a pattern or a print, I like to always do diagonal because otherwise sometimes that straight seam is gonna catch your eye because it really breaks up the pattern of the fabric. So. Uh, in this case, I probably, with these fabrics, I could go either way. I could go either way, whether I go do a straight stitch or a diagonal, because once my quilt is quilted, you're never gonna see this seam um, in there because the fabric is very, uh, very much like, almost like a solid. So for a horizontal layout, all you're gonna do is alternate. So from our pattern, um, these are the two larger lay, uh, larger layouts for the full size and the queen size, and we have the lap size. So you are just going to arrange your blocks into horizontal rows based on the A's and B's. You're going to position them um, however the angle of that middle strip goes, or the parallelogram, what the angle of that. And then, so the first row is going to be just blocks and the smaller rectangles in between the blocks. And then the alternating row, so the second row, and so all the even numbered rows will start off with a large rectangle, and then you're gonna do a block, and then a small rectangle, and so on the each end, you're gonna have these large rectangles, and that's gonna shift and offset your blocks perfectly. And so then you're gonna arrange all that, and you're gonna sew your block um, rows together, along with the rectangles, get that all pressed, 
and then I like to measure them. So then you want to measure all these rows and find the median. So if, if they're not all the same size, it happens to all of us. <clears throat> then you're going to measure them and find the median and then you're going to cut your sashing strips depending on the size that will, will tell you how many sashing strips you need. And you're going to cut those to the same size as that median measurement. And then you're going to just sew all of those guys together. And if you're doing the horizontal layout, you sew all of them together with the sashing. Then you measure and, and cut and add the side borders. And then finally, the top and bottom. So that finishes off our quilt. I have it now. This My original Ava is hanging behind me. So you can kind of see. So we have the small rectangles in between and then the long sashings in between. And so the blocks get offset automatically. So it really is a simple, simple assembly in the end. Now, if you wanted to try the vertical layout. So the vertical layout, I have everything ready for you. So let's check it out on the screen first, how the um, vertical layout will look. So this is for the lap size. And like I explained in, in um, part three of the quilt along, you were gonna be making eight A blocks and 10 B blocks. And so now it's time to um, show you the adjustments that you need for the vertical layout ver when we are talking about the background. So there is a sheet that I have made that you can print out from my website. I have actually included a link in the description of the video, but you can also just go to my website under the little tab that says more. There's a, uh, a link that says free patterns and templates. If you click on that, it's going to take you to this PDF that you can print out. So, and I just have on here the adjustments so we can look at it in the overhead camera. Uh, the adjustments are gonna be in steps one through seven, which I told you before, making the eight A blocks and, and 10 B blocks. And then we are hopping straight into step eight when we are arranging the block. So you're gonna arrange it into the vertical rows along with the two sizes of back background rectangles. So we have the smaller rectangles, so they're obviously going to be positioned differently, and the large rectangles. Now for the vertical layout, if you did cut all your background out according to the pattern for the horizontal layout, you will have a couple of extra big rectangles. So you will actually only need four big rectangles, and then, but then you're going to need two extra small rectangles. So no big deal if you cut it, if you cut six like in the, in the horizontal layout, just cut those two more from one of these. And so, <clears throat> so everything else will work out just fine. So then it's going to be the same thing. You're going to arrange your blocks into vertical rows with the um, rectangles in between. Every other row will have the large rectangle at the top and the bottom. And then you sew them together. You will measure all your, your rows. And then you're going to take your border strips and cut the according uh, sashings from that. Now, since I'm doing a vertical layout, I am such a kind of a habit, I have a habit for when I'm doing the outer borders, I like to always do the shorter borders last. So in this case, when we're doing a vertical layout, you not only measure and cut the sashings, but you can do it for the outer borders too. So these are all gonna be the same size. So six of them, and then you can just sew that together and then measure the top and bottom, cut and add the top and bottom border. So I have my blocks um, actually all arranged on my design wall. I have not sewn it together yet. There was no time from coming home from uh, teaching uh, gig and then getting everything ready for the show today. So I just threw them up on my design wall. I might throw th something around but check it out so this is how my Ava is going to be I have the um, vertical layout obviously and this dark navy background and my fabrics for the blocks are from the stargazer stash builder bundle that we have available in the store and I just love it I love how they all turned out and I may play with it a little bit I might need to throw that yellow more around and um, but other than that, I really love how it's going to come out. It's going to be really, really cool. And that, that navy was the perfect background. So hopefully I'll get a little bit of time 
uh, later in the week to sew it together so I can show it to you next week during our Tipsy Tuesday next week. So I would love to um, answer any questions you have on this, the Ava Quilt Along. Any questions on the layouts and if you um, can easily find the printout for, for the vertical layout. Um, so Sue is asking what finish size should the blocks be? So finished, they should be about 14 and a half by eight. So here's the thing, whenever you cut a diagonal, uh, uh, anything diagonally, and you put something in between, you sew it back together, you're not gonna get 100% accurate um, to an inch or a half inch uh, measurement on a block like that. So that's why I say about. So in the pattern, there's a correction that you find on the corrections page. After you put the parallelogram in between, it says that the width should be 14 and a half, but it should be more like 15 inches. But here's the thing, as long as all your blocks are the same size, things are gonna all work out in the end. And if they don't, if, you're, if your rows are not the same width, guess what, there's always room to trim because we have those rectangles on the ends that you can always trim. And so, um, but it should be about 14 and a half. So that measurement should be a little bit, you know, it can be variable. I hope you understand what I'm talking about that way. All right, um, any other questions on the layout? So we are going to be, okay, so Elaine wants to see if we see the vertical design on my wall again. Yeah, we can put that image back up so you can look at it. And I will, I can also post it in the crew, in, on Goodrun's Quilt Crew. I will post um, that photo so you can kind of study it if you want. And then of course, uh, next week, I will for sure have it sewn together so I can show you. There it is. So um, make sure that if you get to sewing your quilt together, take a photo and of course we're gonna have a giveaway for the Ava like we always do. So what you have to do is find a post on the GE Designs Facebook page and find that post that says giveaway post and then you post your photo in the comments from that on that post and then you are eligible to win uh, to in, to, then you're automatically entered to win the prize for each part of the quilt along. Now we randomly pull a winner and so also if you share on Instagram make sure you use that hashtag use the Ava, hashtag AvaQA um, on Instagram. So our winner for part three of the Quilt Along, great to see all your blocks. Um, the winner is Karen Firkenhoff. I hope I pronounced that correctly. But congratulations, Karen. You will get a prize. So after our fourth week, so next week, we will send out all the prizes for part one through four. But of course, make sure you take a photo and post it um, before Tipsy Tuesday next week. We will have another Tipsy Tuesday next week at 7 p.m. Central Time. And so um, we will be contacting you for, the for your address so we can send you all the prizes. All right, any more questions? Um, Charlene said I cut blocks for the full size. Do you have a vertical layout for that size? I do not because um, sometimes when we flip things the other way, the number of blocks, it just didn't add up. So you can of course play with it and um, just like use that um, lap size layout as a guide, but it sometimes doesn't work out because the width of the quilt and the amount of the blocks. And so it was really only available for uh, an easy transition, I should say, for the lap size. But of course, feel free to play with it. It's gonna be the same size rectangles and everything. So you can try it out. All right, so any other questions on the Ava Quilt Along or should we move on? Um, oh, Mel Melanie says, what is the best way to care for and clean the new cutting mats? Got some fuzzies from cutting flannel. Okay, so it's just like any other cutting mat, uh, warm water and some soap and just a, a light, maybe a sponge. Do not use a scrubby because that can uh, ruin your mat and the, you know damage some of the lines, but just a soft sponge and kind of get that with warm water and soap and it should be just fine. I actually always just use, um, if you are cutting and you get some fuzzies in it, I always use just a roller, uh, like a lint roller over my cutting mat. I love that when I'm cutting 
you know, trimming pre-cuts and you got those pink edges and it just kind of cleans them up right away. And so that is another good idea. I tend to try and not cut batting or uh, minky on my cutting mat. I, for minky, I like to use scissors because I don't want to get those stuck into the grooves of my cutting mat. So, but soap and water, warm water should be just fine. Just make sure you lay it flat and uh, are not curving it into your bathtub or anything. Um, all right, so Gracie's asking, is there a good way to cut blocks if they're slightly off to make them all the same? So if they're not all the same, then definitely you can just trim them up. And uh, so just find kind of the smallest one and trim, just trim all the edges. It's, you know, it's not gonna be, I'm, I'm assuming it's not gonna be a huge difference. There probably isn't more than a quarter inch difference in your blocks. And so uh, that way you won't, you can't tell even if you trim that off of the others. All right, Susan asking, a local shop had a leap day sale. I bought the new mat and four of my friends got the Stripology XL. That's awesome news. We've got some new Stripologists in the house. Um, okay, Mary said, never thought of using a lint roller. Oh my gosh, my lint roller is a staple in my sewing room. I have one, two, I have one up here. <laughs> They're everywhere because they are great for everything. Um, all right, any other, any other questions? Um, good advice for mat care. Yeah, I mean, we could really do a whole show on cutting mats and mat, uh, caring for your cutting mats. Just make sure you don't leave them in a very hot or very cold car unless they are completely flat and really you shouldn't leave them in there um, make sure you always have them laying completely flat don't put anything bumpy under them because that can make a term a permanent curve in them now the creative grids mats are quite a bit thicker than many other mats so they are a bit sturdier i feel like even though i don't have any um you know they're so new that we don't really have that much of a history with them but I, I have a feeling that they are going to be easier uh, to kind of move around because they are so thick and sturdy. All right. Uh, any other questions? I think we're good on the quilt along. So now I just can't wait to see all those Avas. And of course, next Tipsy Tuesday, next week, if you get your quilt done and take a photo and post it, I will try to gather all the photos and we'll have a big, big quilt show, Ava quilt show next week and show you all the photos. All right, so we are ready to um, move on to our second topic of the day. So that is, of course, our trimester three of the Fast and Furious Club. Now, those of you that don't know what I'm talking about um, are new to my show, possibly. So this is a monthly pattern club where each month I release a quilt as you go project uh, with a, an instructional video class. So you get a PDF pattern downloadable and then the complete class where I take you from start to finish through all the steps of making that project. And of course, being quilt as you go, we are piecing it through the backing and batting so that when you're done piecing, we put the binding on and your project is ready. All the projects are small projects, table runners, toppers, uh, we did a tree skirt and things like that because of course we don't wanna be having our whole big quilt for a big um, lap size quilt under our sewing machine at the same time. So uh, we started in September. The Fast and Furious Club runs for nine months, so from September through May, and we have already done six months. And so now we only have March, April, and May to go. So they come out in trimester, so you can always see three projects ahead. Uh, you have the opportunity to buy the full nine months for, of course, a better price than even the three, then you have a, a chance of buying the three the, in trimesters, you get a little bit better price, but then you can also buy them individually. And so they come out on the 20th of each month. And we just had the 20th of, um, we just had the 20th of February, sorry, uh, just had the last project come out then. So we live in this era of instructional videos. I feel like we all go to YouTube if we need to see anything. If I need to do anything in my house uh, or figure anything out, I go on YouTube because who, who needs to, who reads a manual anymore? Manuals don't even come with your things. So uh, I just have been so thrilled with and wanted to test this club out uh, with when I did the block of the month, the stroll in Paris and with all the great feedback for that. 
you know, I thought this was a perfect, a perfect transition into something that's a monthly thing. And Quilt As You Go method, it really is a great, great thing for a videos because it's such a visual, it's such a unique technique. So it's been great to see the success of uh, the Fast and Furious Club video, uh, video and pattern. <clears throat> so without further ado, I should say though, all the patterns that I designed for the club are exclusive and uh, brand new patterns and exclusive to the club. And so I've tried to design them with everybody in mind and also with a progression in technique and trying out different fun techniques throughout the, the season. So for, uh, without further ado, we'll take on the first one. The first, which is the March project, is a table runner called Spilled Beans Table Runner. So let's put that up on the screen. There it is. So this one is a really fun um, runner. Perfect for Easter. They could be jelly beans or they could be eggs. Uh, I just call it spilled beans because I just thought that was really fun. Uh, we do a lot more in this runner with the illusion of curves technique as we were introduced to a little bit in the October and the December patterns. So this runner is made with a charm pack. So one charm pack and some accent fabric. And I used, uh, for this version of it, I used this really fun fabric from uh, Robin Pickens. It's called Thatched. And so it's all the same print. So it's a great tone on tone and different hues. And I just thought it was really fun because of the kind of rainbow effect on the whole thing. And so we have some that are pieced just using that rainbow feeling and then some that are full color. So really fun. So all you need is that, that fab, the accent fabric and then a charm pack. You don't even use all of the charms in here so you can kind of pick and choose your favorite. And so this is the March project and plenty of time to get this one done for Easter. So let's check out our February project. This one I call the Low Tide Runner. So this one is done make with um, all kinds of different with strips that are cut from fat eighths. And it's a technique that I call sew by number. So you kind of mark out your batting and then you fill in each area using strips. It's a really fun technique, great to use for all kinds of leftovers and scraps and stuff. So for this one version, I used I kind of thought it was, I called it low tide because this kind of reminded me of the little ripples that you see on the beach when the tide goes out. And uh, wanted to use these really cute beachy fabrics for this version. And so uh, this one is available, be available in a kit. And I'm also doing another colorway of the kit because I can't, I can't wait to make this in different colors. I just think this is, this is such a fun runner, um, such a visual impact. It's a little bit longer runner, so it's 50 inches. And uh, so such a great, great piece to have in the house. So that is our April project. And for our last project of the season, and of course being May, we have a topper, table topper called May Baskets. Let's check it out. So there we have quite a bit of fusible applique. I thought, you know, how about something really fun and fresh to really bring in summer in a great way. So of course we will be kind of working with um, a lot of fusible applique. So it's pieced first through all the layers, so all the background and the baskets are pieced. And then we add the fusible applique on top and um, done just very easy with, with fusible web. And then after you have everything fused on, uh, it's really fun if you want to add some details with doing some extra free motion. I did a little bit in the middle and then of course on the flowers to stitch them down because I like to use just a light fusible and then use uh, the stitching to not only secure my appliques in place but to add some dimension. So I had some fun with um, little free motion fun things on the appliques. So that is our five projects. So what do you think? I, I can't wait to see your, your comments on everything. So I just think this topper is gorgeous. And if you like fusible applique, of course, you're gonna, you're gonna love it. Now, if you don't 
like fusible applique, uh, you could always piece the basket and just add a few flowers. You don't have to do all of them. And so you can just kind of do it and, and adjust it to, to your like. Um, I think this would be awesome to do the base. If you like wool, you could do wool applique on here and um, it would be gorgeous with this. And of course we have a little bit of a bias binding, so a little bit rounded corners that we're gonna show you how to round the corners on it, of it because I thought the baskets were just really pretty with rounded corners. So great one for a round table or it fits a square table as well but uh, really, really pretty. So I would love to see some of your comments. Oh, um, oh let's, let's see who's favorite. Denise's favorite is April. Yeah, I can't, choose, I can't choose a favorite. I love them all. It's really fun. They're all fun and easy to do. All right, so Katie says, terrifies me, but I give it a try. Fusible applique is easy. It's just, you know, drawing those units or tracing the units on fusible web you iron the fabric on cut it out and slap it on and then it just to just stitch it in place um joyce said not sure about the may project fairly new to quilting don't worry i'll take you through it um sue says the topper will be challenging but fun and perfect for scraps of fabrics yes exactly of course we have we have kits for you um those of you that enjoy our kits i've put some kits together and so let me show you the different ones that we have put together so for for the um let me see first one oh here it is it fell on the floor so all of our kits include all the fabrics you need for the topper and binding and backing as well so here we have thatched so this is exactly how um i call this the rainbow version so it has a, a charm pack of thatched and then the background I chose is really fun from Andover kind of a speckled background gray background and then you have a nice fun gray backing in this kit I have another colorway I don't have the runner finished but I will and so you'll be able to see it but I intend on making a second version using these really fun florals from Sherry and Chelsea by Moda so really fun springy fun colors i thought you know if you want to do it for spring or easter i think these would be really cute and fun and then we have a gray nice gray background another basic from andover and a fun uh, fresh backing that really matches all the kind of coral colors in here all right and then we have our april project the low tide so here's our kit for the low tide so you have all the all the fabrics that I used in my topper so the pretty peaches and all the greens and uh, binding and backing and I am putting together a second kit for this runner which will be red white and blue I just I can't wait to see how that turns out so it will be a little bit of a nautical theme but of course because we cut the strip so small it's not going to be that um, kind of harsh nautical because it will be more like just a red, white, and blue. So perfect for summer. I thought that would be, would be great. And so I have a kit um, already up on the website. I just don't have it cut out. I didn't, didn't get enough time to cut it um, today. And then we have, um, of course, the kit for the May basket. So you have the fun background that I used, the really kind of colorful speckled fabrics uh, from Andover, and then all the appliques and a really fun stripe binding that I used and a backing. So these are all up on the website and they are very limited numbers because uh, it's always hard to get fabrics exactly what I am use, but they are all up on the websites and I have all the links in the description of the video. So make sure you check it out and snatch those up. We will be shipping these, the kits, starting next week. We are a little bit behind on the cutting schedule because of all my travels. But we'll be cutting this week and shipping everything out next week. And so you just have to wait till the videos come out then on the 20th of each month. Now, uh, if you did put, if you did purchase the nine month subscription for the Fast and Furious Club, then the fabric requirements for all three projects will be in your account right after the show. Now the third trimester all together, three projects is now available on the website. I did include a link too. And so you can um, 
purchase that now and there you will find on there right away the fabric requirements for all three projects and also some videos on basics on quilt as you go you'll find a video on fusible web so you can start watching those videos a little bit now of course again you can purchase each project on its own but then you just have to wait till the 20th of each month when that particular one comes out so let's see if we have any questions um nancy says would be awesome if you offered a kit in wool with the flowers pre-cut no i don't carry any wool but maybe if some shops that do would like to put together a kit for it that would be pretty awesome so um, if you have a shop and you have some wool and would like to put together some wool kits contact me email me and i will put that information up there all right, Alisa says, you say just stitch it down regarding fusible applique, but that is the hard part. Maybe it will be easier on my long arm. I have done that too. Sometimes when I run out of time, I've told my long armor to just stitch my appliques down. Um, so, all right, Katie's asking, who makes these fabrics in the April kit? Oh, the fabrics are, the beachy fabrics are made, most of them are by uh, Camelot fabrics but I threw in a few extras because I felt like it needed a little more peach, peach colors. And then the other version for the nautical, it will be a mix of things, but I think there are a lot of them are Riley Blake. So, uh, you know, my kits are all kind of a mix. I love to mix things up. All right. Um, Elisa says, does the May kit include the fusible web? No, it, it does not include the fusible web. That's the only thing that's not in the kit is the fusible web. And of course the batting. So I didn't include that because those of you that purchased when we started the club, we had um, kind of a starter kit with the batting and all those little supplies that you uh, could use. And so uh, the fusible web was in that pack. So uh, I didn't include it in the kit. Uh, Katie says Vid videos are godsend, so good and helpful. Great. So I will, if you're scared about uh, stitching that fusible down, I will make sure um, that you get a little, uh, kind of a, a preview of that how I do that all right uh, any other questions all right Ellen says not hard if you know what to do I can send you class notes from applique classes I've taught I'll PM me oh that's nice thank you Ellen that's great now it's uh, if those of you that like hand applique it's a little bit hard to do hand applique with quilt as you because we're gonna have the whole sandwich so that's why fusible and machine applique works perfect for that technique. Um, okay, Doreen says, what helpful tools will we need for these projects? Learned after, afterwards for the last three, learned could use the sash maker and also the point trimmer for the other. So yes, I introduced that when we introduced the three. Um, there is one, there is a different size sasher for, that you could use for this one because we're doing the sashing as well as the one inch sasher. So I'm actually getting those in the store. So I will include those in the shop um, and uh, they will be arriving this week. So they could be shipped out with the, um, with the kits. I just forgot to mention it. So that's the only tool that is helpful that I can really think of that I used um, other than of course, fusible applique for that last uh, May project. All right. Um, Lucy says, can't wait to see the red, white, and blue kit. Yes, me too. And I am excited to sew it up to see how it turns out. So I hope I can have some time to do that this week. Um, all right. Oh, AccuCut can be used for the appliques. That is true. And actually, if you have, a lot of people um, are starting to have those digital cutters like um, CryCut, I think, where you can get, um, also all you have to do is fuse your, fusible web on the back of the fabric and then you can just run it through the machine and so you need a specific files for from the pattern so I can see if we can uh, turn that over once we get to April once we get to May um, if those if any of you have those machines and would like to do it that way um, Denise says just saying the point trimmers were a game changer for making the Ava quilt yes isn't that the truth and also, if you did do the February project in the Fast and Furious Club, those trimmers, the 90 degree trimmer is great for that as well. Um, all right, so any other questions on Fast and Furious Club? Okay. All right, no, I, th I think we're good with questions. 
Good questions, great points. So thank you for doing that. But we're gonna choose our live winner. So those of you watching live, we chose one of you that has that has been commenting, and our winner is Susan Kindon. So congratulations, Susan. You will get a gift card to use in the GE store, and we will contact you. But thank you for being with us live. We always appreciate that. Um, so Connie says, so do you use the Stripology ruler for the March ovals? So we are not really doing anything curved. So if you look at it, we are doing the illusion of curves. So these are actually rectangles and then we place these little pieces in and then we curve the edges. So it's a really fun, easy technique. No curved piecing available. You can't really do it with quilt as you go. So uh, it's, we, that's why we call it the illusion of curves. So yes, we of course use the stripology ruler to cut everything out. Why wouldn't we? So, uh, but everything is rectangles. And I use, use the mini, I prefer the mini for when I'm working with charm squares. All right, for specifically for the March project. All right, so that is it. Um, so let's move on. Let's see. Uh, Linda says it would be greatly appreciated if you do provide the file formats for the digital cutters. I will see if I can make that happen. Um, I've never tried that before, but I, I do know that my my software is is has the capability to do it. So I just don't have one. I really want one though. So maybe that'll be an excuse for me to get one and test it out. <laughs> that there's an idea. So um, I will check check that out because that is truly would be a game changer. That'd be a game changer. All right, um, love my mini ruler. Yes, I've heard that from so many people this week that everybody loving the mini. I think, I think it's kind of underestimated. People didn't think they needed it and then they get it and they use it all the time. So it's just interesting. Oh, Carol is already asking for another quilt along. <laughs> of course, we are always planning. So one thing I've done every year on Facebook and in my Facebook group, Goodrun's Quilt Crew, make sure you join the group if you are on Facebook, is a strip along. So every year we do a strip along. And so that one is coming up a little bit in a, couple, in a month or two. So just stay tuned for that. And that's where I take a strip pattern. And um, I usually do a strip pattern that's, that was designed and written way before the Stripology rulers. And I kind of stripologize it and change it up a little bit so that um, so we can have some fun using the rulers, of course. So that is coming. That is coming. Uh, Vicky says, how many did the stroll in Paris? Now, I don't know how many people actually sewed the quilt yet, but there were close to a thousand subscribers. So that was pretty amazing. Now, I know a lot of people haven't started yet, but they will. And don't worry, it's all in good time and and it's not a, a race <laughs> so it'll always be there it doesn't go bad and the videos will be there for you forever so it's all good uh, April says if ordering kits will they ship together or one each month no they all ship together so they will be ready to ship next week so if you place an order they're all online so far and just wanted to tell you again limited numbers because of course we have we have limited um, fabrics so once you order it, if it's if you place an order for all of them, they will all come together. Um, Kathy says, May baskets look beautiful. What level of sewing is needed for the May baskets? I would say confident beginner. Um, you know, people get a little bit scared of that fusible applique, but it's it's really, really easy. So don't be scared of that at all. So you can, everybody can do it. All right. Um, any other questions? Lava strip along. Okay, good. Yeah, get ready for the next strip along. We, we have to finish this one officially though, the Ava quilt along, right? <laughs> Let that finish first. All right. Um, it's really, a, yeah, Denise said love quilt alongs. Oh, Carolyn is taking her stroll in Paris to the quilter soon. That's great. And they, uh, and, uh, and Bonnie is just waiting to bind it. That was great. So much fun. So who wants another stroll in Paris? You want another mystery block of the month like that? Yes, okay, good. <laughs> There's always something. I'm always, it's always, always turning. Wheels are always turning, so it's all good. 
All right, so um, I wanted to finish off with some things. So I showed you three, three or four different um, new bundles that came into the store last week, one of them being this sheet bundle. And guess what? There's only, I think, two left. It was really a hit. So just like our kits, I want to just say with our bundles, it's the same thing. We have limited numbers. Once they're gone, they're gone. It's something that I talk about all the time in my classes, and I actually mentioned it when I was doing my lecture last night. You know, when you walk into a quilt shop and you see fabric that you really like, and then you hesitate because you don't really know what you're going to do with it, but of course it stays in your brain. If you leave without it, it stays in your brain. So the next time you're going to go get it, it's gone. Happens all the time. So I always say, if you see something you like, even if you don't know what you're going to do with it, just get it. It's just fabric. It doesn't go bad. It's no expiration date and it will get used for anything. So, uh, because it's going to be gone the next time. So I'm just going to say that if you see a bundle you like, <laughs> snatch it up is you're going to use it for something. That's for sure. So I have two new ones already so we got some fabric in this this week and uh one bundle that i put together it's an idea that i've had to put together a themed bundle for teachers uh, i know a lot of people that love to do teacher gifts in the spring and then especially for kids that are graduating either elementary or any kind of school and uh it's always fun i thought we had to have a bundle that would be all kind of teaching themed or, or themed around <clears throat> around the classroom. So I put one together. And so let me show you the teacher bundle. Um, I started with this print. I just thought this was so much fun. So this is the periodic table according to Dr. Seuss. So it's a Dr. Seuss periodic table. And um, I wanted it also not to be too juvenile because so you could kind of use it for any kind of grade level. Um, so uh, this is, I th think, was really fun kind of science-y. And then I chose prints that, that so I used kind of these color as my guide and chose prints that work with it. So we have, um, start with the blues here. So we have some, some DNA strands here, some science-related fabrics, and then we have a more science -y's. So a little bit of black and more blue, and we have some formulas on this one, and some more math here, some ge geometry. And then we have um, some, some of the reds. So I pulled in some more math fabric here that kind of has that orangey feel that ties in with the, the original. And of course, some graph paper. I have to have some graph paper. And then we have these really fun pencils, all ties in together. And I did just a little bit of black to, to kind of tie in with the pencil tops and into the first print and of course numbers on it. And then we have some lights and of course library cards. We have notebook paper and then we have those um, those papers that we used to, to practice our writing. I just loved this. Was, this was such a blast from the past because I used to love doing that when the teacher would write the words and then you would take it home and you had to fill the page with that word. So I just love it. So I think this is just such a fun teacher, teacher um, bundle. And even if you don't have kids in school anymore, I know that my daughter-in-law is a teacher, and so I may have to snatch these away and kind of keep them, keep at least one for me. So this is our new teacher bundle, and then we have another line that came in that's just beautiful. It's just gorgeous floral. So this fabric line is called Marguerite, and it's by Wyndham, and it's all grays and yellows. So it's just gorgeous. So in this bundle, there's actually 13 prints, and I. I thought about just putting 12, but I couldn't, I couldn't leave one out. So we have these grays and these, it has a little bit of vintage feel, but I just love the, um, just the styling on it being in this colorway. It just makes it so pretty and not dated. It's kind of really fresh. And then with that yellow and gray and white, isn't that gorgeous? It's just so pretty. And I love these geometrics kind of throwing in a little modern geometrics with a little pop of yellow in this one. 
um, more cabbage roses, just really pretty. And then we get more of that really bright yellow. I also just love the shade of yellow. It's very kind of lemony. And, and so it's, it's really just gray and yellow. But I love that because you could throw um, these all together and you know, automatically just come out with a gorgeous quilt. You can throw in some accents. You could put in white with it. You could put even like a really dark charcoal or almost a black with it or throw a third color in and just make a really pretty quilt. So, so that's brand new in the store already. And actually got some more that will be that I didn't get to before the show, but I'll show you next week. What do you think? You like those? Do you like these bundles? I would love to hear your opinions on those. Um, of course, we still have a few 18 by 24 cutting mats. They are sold out all over the country and we won't get them back into the country until April. And unfortunately, the coronavirus and everything is making things hard, um, making it hard to get things from Asia. Although these are made in Taiwan, so it's a little bit better. But um, we still have a few of them in stock. All right, we have some questions on the bundles. Um, oh, Jean says, have you seen Heather Gibbons Pencil Club? Yes, I did see that and I wasn't able to get any of it. I was trying to get some of the prints, but I was too late. That's what happens. Um, so Elisa says, when you buy fabric because you like it, but don't have a plan, how much do you buy? So if I, if I find a fabric, that's going to be a great background. So background can be any color, but if it's just a great tone on tone, really cool that I think I could use for a background, I always get five yards, five yards, because if I get three, of course it's not enough. Then I of course want to make use it for a queen size quilt and it's not going to be enough, but five yards are always going to be enough for a pretty large quilt. And if I don't use it all, I'll just use it up on the for the back. Um, Carolyn says I buy at least one and a half yards. And if it's on sale, up to five yards or a little more. If you need a yard, buy the bolt. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, okay, Gracie says Germany, London, Ireland. Any would be awesome for the next uh, mystery. Well, we'll have to see. Oh, Denise is also asking how much should you buy when you find out, uh, find some lovely fabric. Yeah, so if I, if I just see a cool fabric that I can just mix in with uh, my collection and just play with, uh, if it's a cool no a novelty fabric or something, I never get less than half yard, never less than a half yard. So a half yard or a yard. So if it's a nice stripe or diagonal plaid or something that I think would be cool for binding, I always get a yard because then I know I can put it on a, on a big quilt and I could also use it for a narrow border. Uh, oh, Barbara says, I need the teacher bundle. I have two scientists in my family. Oh, love that. I love that. Yeah, I love those sciency fabrics. It's just so cool. Um, all right, love the gray and yellow bundle, says Kari. Uh, so pretty. Yeah, it's just really lovely, really pretty. It's just so fresh and just makes you think of spring and summer, even though it's gonna be a while here in this, this uh, part of the country. I, th I feel like we're in this, era like we're getting kind of nice weather but i always think it's they tease us and then we get the march snowstorms and then you know so i'm i'm preparing myself gail says iceland mystery okay all right i'm writing it all down right here so we'll see what comes what comes out um but we're gonna finish this up with our giveaway of course giveaway question so I, uh, my question for all of you to enter the giveaway, just answer this in the comments. What is your favorite snack to have in your sewing room? Now me, I always, always stash a little chocolate in my sewing room. It's actually in my drawer in my desk, always. There's always a little bar of chocolate for just a little bite. Um, and it was actually kind of funny. We were working here last week and Mr. Producer was, I came up here and he was chewing on something. I'm like, what are you eating? He got into my stash of chocolate. Shh. <laughs> did you, did you restock it? He hasn't restocked it yet. So I may need to restock it. So just answer me, what is your favorite snack to have in the sewing room? And we will randomly pick a winner and announce it next week for the show. And then of course we would love it if you share the video, if you, if you like it and uh, all you have to do is hit that share button. We will be live next week. March 10th, Tipsy Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. I have a fun show planned. And of course, 
a slideshow of some finished Ava quilts. Can't wait for that one. I'll show you mine. And uh, I will also be live in Gudrun's Quilt Crew this coming Friday, Facebook Friday, and that is going to be at 3 p.m., of course, with a cocktail in hand, inspired by my recent travels. So I hope I see you Friday and definitely next week for Tipsy Tuesday. Thank you for watching. Thank you.